Good morning, church. This is the day that the Lord has made, and let us rejoice and be glad in it. We just thank God uh, for another uh, Sunday morning that we can come out here at Quinn Chapel and praise and worship Him. Not only at Quinn Chapel, but those of you who are, who are watching us through uh, Facebook, your phone, and other places, it's just a privilege for us to be in the house of the Lord. Um, hope you had a wonderful week. Hope that God met your needs and just hope that um, uh, you had a wonderful time in the Lord. This morning I will be doing the opening prayer. I also would be um, uh, mentioning to you about the globe of this global prayer ministry here at Quinn that has been started through our pastor, Pastor Luke J. Robinson. And I will also be praying for the world. And I will also read the scripture for you this morning. So let's start out with an opening prayer. Father, I come to you in Jesus' holy and precious and righteous name. Father, I bless you. I praise you. I magnify your holy and righteous name. Believe you're God and you are God all by yourself. There is no other God like unto you. You are King of kings, your Lord of lords, and you are greatly to be praised. So, Lord, right now I lift everyone under the sound of my voice, hallelujah, God, that when the message is being brought forth, God, that it will encourage them, that it will let them know that there is hope in Jesus Christ. I also pray for those who have not accepted Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior, that they will cry out and say, what must I do to inherit eternal life? God, be with the, the preacher this morning, which is myself, Reverend Parker, God. Open up the words that I may speak clearly, that someone, God, will be set free. So, Lord, I thank and I praise you and I magnify you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amen. From Sunday to Sunday and from time to time, I have been asking you through the leadership of our pastor here at Quinn, Pastor Luke J. Robinson, to uh, purchase a globe. The purpose of purchasing a globe is to put it somewhere where it will remind us to pray for others and pray for the different continents and the different continents and things that are even happening um, all over the uh, United States. Things in the natural seems that it is getting worse and worse. It seems like there, there are more killings, younger people, there are more uh, people that are committing suicide, there are people in other countries and continents who is being persecuted for accepting Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. So if we have a need to pray, we need to pray now. We are asking those of you out there that are listening under the sound of my voice and maybe some of you here uh, in Quinn Chapel to purchase this globe and be a part of our global prayer ministry here at um, Quinn Chapel AME Church here in Frederick, Maryland. So if you would like to be a part of our global prayer ministry, you can reach us via telephone, email, or you can even write us. The information will be listed at the end of this service, how you can get in contact with us to be a part of this global prayer ministry. Because the Bible tells us that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that Whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And I would like to lift up the world right now in prayer. Father, we come to you in Jesus' name. We lift up the world, God, because you gave your life and laid down your life for the world. So, Lord, all are in the world that do not know you as their personal Lord and Savior, that they will cry out and say, what must I do to be saved? Lord, we pray for the different countries and the different continents, God, who are being tormented and, and tortured and taken out of their homes for believing that Jesus is the way, 
the truth, and the light. God, we come together as their sisters and brothers, and we stand in the gap for them, God. God, we remember people over the world who have lost loved ones, hallelujah, God. Pray for them and then strengthen them and encourage them, God. Encourage them, God, that you will give them a peace that surpasses all understanding. Yes. Lord, we thank you thank and we you. praise you and we magnify you because you are the Lord of our life. In Jesus' name, I pray and do give thanks. Amen and amen. amen. The scripture this morning will be taken from... Hebrews chapter 11 verses 1 through 16 that's Hebrews chapter 11 verses 1 through uh, 16 and also Hebrews chapter 12 verses 1 and 2 Hebrews 11 1 through 16 and Hebrews uh, chapter 12 1 and 2 and it reads, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, for the evidence of things not seen. I'm going to say that again. <laughs> now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by faith, it the elders obtain a good report. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gift, and by it being dead, yet speaking. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death, and was not found, because God had translated him, for before his translation, he had this testimony that it pleased God. By But without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that digitally seek him. By faith, nor being one of God of things not seen as yet, move with fear, prepared and not for the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. By faith Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed and went out not knowing whether he went. By faith he sojourned in the land of promise as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city which hath a foundation, whose builder and maker is God. Through faith also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age, because she judged him faithful who had promised. Therefore sprang there even of one, and him as a good as dead, so many as the stars of the sky in multitude, as the sand which is by the seashore innumerable. These all died in faith, not having received the promise, but having seen them afar off, they were persuaded of them and embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. For they that say such things declared plainly that they seek a country. And truly, 
if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they might have opportunity to have returned. But that now they desire a better country, that is, the heavenly, where God is not ashamed to be called their God, but he have prepared a place for them. Amen. Hebrews 12, 1 and 2 reads, Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us. And let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto God, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Amen and amen. Amen. My name is uh, Reverend Shirley Parker. I am a local deacon here at Quinn Chapel AME Church here in Frederick, Maryland, under the leadership of our senior pastor, uh, Pastor Luke J. Robinson. And I will be bringing the uh, message to you this morning. And I hope that you will listen and take heed that this message will bring a change about in our life, that this message will encourage us, and this message will give us just the strength to say, you know, I can make it, I can do this uh, through Jesus Christ. I want to give honor to uh, my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and Thank Pastor Robinson for giving me this opportunity to preach this morning. My message will be coming from um, the Hebrews 12, 1 and 2, and it's entitled, Lose the Weight. Lose the Weight. Let us pray. Father, I come to you in Jesus' holy and precious and righteous name. Father, I pray that my message will be simple and Christ-like, that the listener may be able to hear, to understand, and to apply. Father, I pray that the anointing that you placed on the inside of me will give me boldness and courage to preach your word without compromising. Holy Spirit, have your way in me this morning. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. The scripture has already been heard in your hearing. And as I said, it was taken from Hebrews chapter 11, verses 1 through 16, and also Hebrews uh, chapter 12, 1 and 2. I would like to go back and review exactly what has taken place in Hebrews of chapter 11. So when we get to Hebrews chapter 12, 1 and 2, it will give us a better understanding of why this particular passage was said by Paul in Hebrews chapter uh, 1 and 2. Hebrews 12, 1 and 2. Hebrews 11, of course, you know, it refers to the faith chapter. Hebrews 11, 1 says, now faith, not yesterday's faith, last week's faith, next week's faith. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So what it's saying is it's evidence but we cannot see it. So we have to have the hope of the evidence that we cannot see that eventually if we trust in God, uh, he will bring that to pass. When we look into the lives of people of faith in Hebrews chapter 11, we will see that they are an example of what faith is all about. And then as we read in Hebrews chapter 11 and see some of the things that they did, they did through, through faith, it will help us 
and strengthen us in our faith. People like Abel, Enoch, Noah, Abraham, Jacob, Sarah, and many others are mentioned in Hebrews uh, chapter 11. Abel in Hebrews offered up to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. We see that in Enoch was taken away that he did not see death. By faith, Noah, being divinely warned of things not yet seen, moved godly with fear, prepared, and asked God for the saving of his household. Abraham obeyed when he was called to go to a place which he received an inheritance and went out not knowing where he was going. By faith he dwelled in the land of promise as in a foreign country, dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. Sarah herself receiving strength to conceive, and she bore a child when she was past age, because she judged him faithful who had promised. There are others mentioned in Hebrews chapter 11, people like Moses and Rahab and Gideon and Barak and Samson and Jephthah and David and Samuel. Other of people that, that were walking in faith was tortured, stoned, and prisoned. They wandered in deserts and they wandered in dens and caves. They all died in faith, not having the promise. But having seen them afar off, what assured of them, embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. Hebrew 11, 39, 40 tell us, and all these having obtained a good testimony through faith, did not receive the promise. God having provided something better for us that they should not be made perfect apart from us. In the future, all believers of the Old Testament and the believers of the New Testament will be brought unto Jesus' kingdom and each would re be rewarded according to their faithfulness here on earth. Because the Bible tells us without faith it is impossible to please God. He that comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Without, which means it exists it's real, and we will be awarded to, according to our faith. That brings us to Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. There we also, since we are surrounded by so great of a cloud of witness, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, which for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. The cloud of witnesses are mentioned in Hebrews chapter 11. All these people of faith who have lived a life of faith approved by God, but they do not, did not receive what was promised. So they have passed the baton to us. There are different types of races. There are track races, there are field events, and there are marathons. But I would like to compare Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 and 2, with a relay race. Because in a relay race, 
There are four runners there, and each passed the baton to the other to finish the race. So if it is important for us to finish the race that is set before us, we have to keep the baton has to keep being passed until we all complete this race. Those of us in the those of them in the old and those of us in the new and those of us who be coming after us until it's all complete. So in a relay race, when they pass the baton, the person that is, 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 is running with the baton have to be careful that they don't slip and fall. So they can't get distracted to what's to their left and what is to their, their right. So they continue to pass the baton to the next person. In the Old Testament, Abraham, Isaac, and all of those, and David has passed the baton to us. So as we live in Christ Jesus, we're all continued in this relay race. Now, if the first person that they pass the baton to until they get the last person, which is the anchor person, you have to make sure that you grip the baton and that it don't fall because it will cause us not to be able to finish, finish the race properly. The pass the baton is being passed from the Old Testament to us as the believer to receive the prize that God has prepared for all of us in the future. So when you run a race, you cannot be weighed down with a lot of weight. That's why I say lose the weight. So the people of the Old Testament or the saints are rooting for us in this particular waste. Way, race. So we cannot be weighed down with an overcoat on, boots on, <laughs> clothes on, and different things is going to cause us to be weighed down to run this race to cross the finish line. In the spiritual realm, it is Paul is telling us to lay down the weights and the sins that so easily ensnare us so we can run this race together. We in the spiritual realm, we cannot be weighed down with worrying and lying and unforgiveness and debt and overthinking and funification and lust. That weighs on us. Lose the weight. And when we lose the weight, don't go back and pick it up again. Don't go back and pick up those things like lying and cheating and, 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 and funification and, and, and pick it back up again. Once you lay it aside and you lay it down, don't go picking it up again. In order to overcome the sins and the weights in our life, we have to recognize what our weaknesses are. We as Christians do not carry the same weight. That's why the Bible tells us that we have to lay aside the weight, the sin that so easily ensnares us. Because each one of us have the weight and the sin that can cause us to sin. For example, cocaine, cigarettes, cannot cause me to become weak and fall into sin because that is not one of my, my weaknesses. But there are weaknesses. I do have weaknesses that can cause me to sin in my life if I'm not rooted and grounded in Christ Jesus. That if I'm not rooted and grounded in Christ Jesus, that's why we have to lay aside the weight and the sin that so easily ensnares us. 
In my life, there are things that I'm struggling with to cause me to sin. If I'm not careful, I can succumb to them. Amen. And I will reach a desire and it will lead me to sin against God. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. So we have to praise God and ask God to come into those weak areas of our life and strengthen us. We have to ask God to show us the weak areas in our life that will cause us to sin against that will cause us to sin against him. It seems like to me about the weights. If I look at a piece of apple pie, seems like an ice cream or your cookies, I gain weight. It seems that way. Someone else may be able to eat a whole gallon of ice cream, eat a whole pack of Oreo cookies, eat pie Alamo every day, and they never seem to gain weight. It may affect other areas in their life down the road, but it will not cause them to gain weight. In a relay race, there are weakness. It's the hips, the hamstring, and the ankle. They are smaller and they are weak. If you put stress on them, eventually they will lead to problems. So they have to exercise these joints to strengthen them. Whether it's the hips, the hamstring, it will affect the whole body and it will affect the entire team. In our Christian walk, we have to strengthen those areas where we are weak, the most weakest. For example, if God shows us in our life our weakness, it may be lust. And if it is lust or whatever it is, you don't put yourself in a position or a place where it will cause that particular area of lust in your life to be enticed. You, who knows, you may have to stay away from the beach for a while until you overcome it. Because you know at the beach, there are a lot of enticing things, enticing women and, and, and enticing men, hardly any clothes on. So you stay away from those areas that will entice your lust. And also, if you are a smoker or or uh, alcoholic and you're struggling with those areas in your life, you can't have things around that will remind you of your smoking and if you're drinking it, if you truly desire to get rid of those weaknesses in your life that uh, will cause you to sin against God. When we sin against God in our spiritual walk, we affect the whole body because we are believers who are connected together. We have to stay focused on Jesus. In a relay race, the runner stay focused on the finish line, or he should. He or she cannot get distracted by those things that are on their left or on their right. They have to stay focused on Jesus or focus on the fin finishes line. There are many distractions that can come our way to uh, keep us or distract us from staying focused on Jesus in the Christian realm. The enemy wants to focus on what we don't have. This is one thing he loves for us to focus on what we don't have instead of focusing on what we do have and be thankful. If we spend most of our time focused on our problems and not the solution, it can cause high blood pressure, heart attack, health problems, just in general. Jesus was able to endure the cross because he looked at the joy that was set before him. 
He looked beyond the cross, so he endured the humiliation, pain, and public death. This faith, this fa his father turning his back on him. The fact he carried out sins, past and present and future, he looked beyond the fact all his disciples forsook him. So this race we are running uh, is nothing compared to what Jesus did on the cross for us. So when we get to a point when we say, why me? Think about Jesus who laid down his life for us. He said it is finished and he sat down at the throne of God. And he said, greater work shall you do, those after me, because I go to the Father. And he will send you a comforter who will lead and guide you. We have everything inside of us to stay into this race and to finish it. Even though we have an opponent that try to kill, steal, and to destroy and put stumbling blocks in front of us. Jesus has given us the comforter to strengthen us and to guide us. While we're in this race and we're running to the finish line, let us remember that um, all the host of heaven is rooting for us. The old, the saints of the Old Testament is rooting for us. Other our sisters and brothers, we should be in this race together where we're rooting for each other, where we encourage one another and yeah. talk to one another and yeah. tell one another we can make it. Yes. We can make it. All believers of Christ and his team is working to reach the finishing line. And as the saints of the Old Testament or has passed the baton to us, we have to live a life where we give our life to Christ, where the baton is passed from us unto other believers, until we all finish this race and receive the promise that God has, has promised us. Yeah. Let us reach out to one another, encourage one another, look into Jesus, who is the author and finisher of our faith. The Bible tells us without faith it is impossible to please God. So let us pray for one another and, and be a team that is connected together and encourage one another to run the race that is set before us. Thank you for your time. God bless you all. Amen. May be in a race. Some of you are in the wrong race because you haven't accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. And we know that uh, we accept Jesus Christ through faith. The Bible say that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. You may be saying as I don't see it, so if I can't see it, I'm not going to believe it. If you can see it, it does not take faith. Faith is that you know it, you, it's coming to pass, but you can't see it. So the Bible tells us that God so loved the world. And the Bible also tells us that if we would believe in our heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, we shall be saved. I'm going to speak to those who are listening to me through via Facebook, your telephones, or, or uh, however you are watching this message and listen, listening to this message. I'm going to let you know that you out there can run this race with the believers, the spiritual race. All you have to do is ask Jesus Christ to come into your life and save you and forgive you for your sins, and he will. Father, I pray right now, all those under the sound of my voice that don't know you in their pardon of their sins, that they will cry out this morning and not put it off and say, what must I do 
that I may inherit eternal life. And also that I want to accept Jesus Christ today. I would not put it off any longer as my personal Lord and Savior. I believe that Jesus died on the cross for me and uh, I believe that he has forgiven me for my sins. So Lord, right now in the name of Jesus, I accept you today as my personal Lord and Savior. And if you had prayed that prayer today, we want to hear from you. If this message has blessed you, and, and we want, let us know that we want to hear from you. And if you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, find yourself a Bible-believing, Bible-teaching church that teach you the Bible, that teach you about Jesus Christ. And if you prayed that prayer, we would like to hear from you. You can reach us by calling us. You can reach us by um, just sending a thank you note or a note out to us to Quinn Chapel AME Church, Post Office Box 3311, um, Frederick, Maryland. We will love to hear from you. And we will love to know if you want to be a part of our global prayer ministry, if you gave the life to Christ, if this message has been a blessing to you. We look forward to hearing from you real soon. God bless you and have a good day in the Lord. Amen.